This is the Whoop Band 4.0, and I've been using the Whoop Band 4.0 on and off for almost two years now. In fact, I've got a full in-depth review about the Whoop Band that I filmed two years ago, and if you wanna learn all about the Whoop Band and the ins and outs and everything it does, check out that video, because this video is not really a review video. So instead of just making another review video about the Whoop Band, because there's a ton of them out there, this video is a little bit different. I wanted to use all of my experience with this product over the past couple of of years to try to help you decide whether or not you should invest in this thing. And to do that, I've got six questions that you should ask yourself when you're trying to decide whether or not you should get something like a Garmin or an Apple Watch, or if you should invest in the Whoop platform. Before we dive into those six questions, a couple of disclaimers. First of all, this video is not sponsored in any way. Whoop doesn't know I'm making this video. They don't need to see it before I post it. I'm not being paid to make this video, so there's that. The next disclaimer I wanna mention is that these six questions are important to me in my lifestyle. Your lifestyle might be different. All I'm trying to do is share my experience in the six questions that would have helped me decide whether or not I should actually purchase this thing when I was looking at it in the first place. With all that out of the way, let's dive into the first question you should ask yourself when you're trying to decide if the Whoop Band is right for you, and that is, do you actually need this thing? This is kind of a no-brainer and probably the most obvious question, but the Whoop Band is targeted for a very specific person. This is designed for everyday casual wear when you're trying to get a better idea of your wellness and sleep and how you're recovering from the previous day. It's also useful for runners like me, gym goers, and CrossFit athletes to track their recovery if they don't have another means of doing that, like an Apple Watch or a Garmin, for example. A lot of the metrics that the Whoop Band tracks can also be tracked by other devices like a Garmin or even an Apple Watch using a very specific app like Athletic or Elite HRV. Whoop just makes it a little bit simpler by keeping everything and all the information in one place in the Whoop app on your phone. And on the topic whether or not you need this thing, another benefit to the Whoop band is its form factor because this can be worn on your wrist, it can be worn on your bicep, or even in your clothes using Whoop's apparel line, which allows you to keep it in your sports bra or in your underwear, or I think they've even got like socks and things like that, where you can actually slide the sensor into your clothes so you don't have to wear any sensor on your wrist or even up on your arm, which is really cool for very specific activities. Another thing I wanted to point out about the Whoop Band is after you use this thing for a while, like I've been using it for a couple of years, you start to identify the habits that affect your sleep and recovery. For example, if you have a couple of drinks um, the night before you have you know, a big event the next day, you're gonna tank your HRV, your sleep's gonna be terrible, you're gonna have a bad recovery score in the morning because of those drinks the night before. And having the Whoop Band will show you that and let you know that it was a bad idea. But after you learn that it was a bad idea, it's kind of easy to remember. And over time, you find yourself not looking at the app as often because you've just learned that bad habit. And that goes for everything. I'm kind of rambling here, but the point I'm trying to make is that not everybody needs the Whoop Band. So don't just buy this thing because your favorite podcaster keeps talking about it in a sponsored segment. That's not to say the Whoop Band is bad. In fact, I really like this thing and it does give you some insight on your strain, your sleep, and recovery. So with the most obvious question out of the way, let's dive into the second question that you should ask yourself, and it's do you need a display on your watch. So if you're new to the Whoop Band and you're unaware of the form factor, this thing is simply a band. There's no display at all on the outside of this band. When you have it on your wrist, it's essentially a black piece of fabric that you're looking at. There's no digital display, no notifications, nothing like that. You might be thinking to yourself, that's a bad thing. However, there are pros and cons to not having a display on your watch. On the pro side of things, if you don't like distractions, if you don't wanna see text messages rolling in and notifications and constant vibration and dinging and all kinds of lights flashing on your wrist, this is kind of nice because it just gets out of the way, it's not distracting, and you kind of forget it's there once you have it on your wrist for a while. Another nice thing about the Whoop Band not having a display is that it's kind of minimalistic and sleek looking, and you can wear it in just about any situation and not have to worry about it standing out or people asking what it is. It's just kind of there. With that said, there are obvious cons here. It doesn't display any data at all. It doesn't even give you the time of day, notifications on your phone. 
nothing like that. It's just a band and nothing more than that. Another thing to consider is that there's no data while you're running or working out. For example, if you want to see your heart rate, your distance, your pace, etc., these are critical things that you probably want to know during your activity, and you simply can't do that with the Whoop Band. And honestly, it would be nice to see some kind of display on this device. Maybe in the next version, they could put something on here that just gives you the time of day or something. Just a basic tiny display, something like a Fitbit would have been acceptable for me, but they went with this direction. And like I said, there are pros and cons here. Moving on to the third question you should ask yourself about the Whoop Band is, do you want to pay for a subscription? And this is a big one. This should probably should have been the first thing I mentioned when we started talking about this, but it's number three. The subscription to the Whoop Band is pretty expensive. And again, check out the link in the description down below if you wanna see all the different pricing for the various options available. If you decide to go with a subscription that's month to month, so you can cancel any time, it's $30 a month at the time of filming this video here in the USA, which $30 a month, that's like, three Netflix accounts. Keep in mind that the Whoop Band itself is pretty inexpensive. I think they charge you like 30 bucks. And if you use my link down below, it's actually free. So the device is free and they're making their money on the subscription. And that's the way they've designed this model. If you do opt to prepay for a year or two years, you can actually knock the price down quite a bit, down to around $17 a month for the two year plan. And when you do that, you're paying $400 upfront for two years. And so you don't have to worry about it for the next two years. And I guess $17 a month isn't bad, but when you think about $400, that is a lot of money. And at $400, you could invest in something like a pretty high-end Garmin or a Koros watch or even an Apple watch and have a, a, an actual watch with a display and a GPS chip built in and all of that versus the Whoop Band. I hear this argument all the time in the comments of my videos where the Whoop Band subscription is so expensive, people say, why not just buy a Garmin or an Apple Watch? And I think the factor a lot of people forget is that when you do buy something like an Apple Watch, over time, you'll find that you spend more money because next year, a new model will come out. And guess what? Your model will feel old and you'll probably want that new model. So you'll buy a $400 watch one year and then the next year spend another $400 on upgrading your watch. And maybe you could sell your old one and make some money back, but the point is, that's almost a subscription in itself when you're in that ecosystem. So with the Whoop Band 4.0, it's obviously a subscription based thing and you'll have to pay 17 bucks a month all the way up to 30 bucks a month to use this thing indefinitely. That just doesn't go away. Where if you invest in something like a Garmin or Apple Watch, you can pay once and kind of forget about it as long as you don't upgrade the following year. Another thing to consider when it comes to subscriptions is that Whoop isn't the only one doing this. Fitbit has a subscription plan and you have to buy their hardware upfront for a couple hundred bucks and then pay a subscription if you want to get the more advanced wellness metrics. And even Garmin has subscriptions for advanced mapping if you want to get, you know, satellite imagery on your watch. The point I'm trying to make here is that Whoop is not alone when it comes to subscriptions, but the Whoop subscription is pretty expensive, so it's certainly a deciding factor. Moving right along into the fourth question you should ask yourself about the Whoop Band is, do you need GPS? Because like I said before, this is simply a band. It does not have a GPS chip inside. So you can't go out and run and track your distance and pace and things like that. This band simply does not do that. The Whoop app on your phone will still automatically track runs and workouts and stuff using algorithms built into the app. So if you go for a run, it will record that as a run. However, because there's no GPS chip in the band, it only records heart rate data and it will give you all of your strain metrics as well. And it'll tell you the duration of the activity, but it won't give you an actual GPS track of your route when you went for your run or your ride. Using the Whoop app on your phone also ties into Strava as well. So if you go for a run, you do a workout or a ride, you can share that on Strava. But again, there's no GPS track, so your friends won't see where you ran, your epic adventure that you went on. All they'll see is a heart rate track and a cool little thumbnail that's Whoop branded and it's got all of your stats on it. What I'm trying to get at here is that if you're mainly a runner or a cyclist and you use GPS regularly, I'd say there's better options out there like a Garmin, a Koros, or even an Apple Watch compared to a Whoop because you've got it all under one umbrella. You can go for a run and track it all on your wrist where if you do have a Whoop band, you'll still need to carry your phone or have another watch on your wrist to do that properly. This all goes back to the form factor I talked about before. This is not a smartwatch. It's not a running watch. It's simply a wellness band. The fifth question you should ask yourself about the Whoop band is what metrics do you actually need to collect? Like I said before, the Whoop Band focuses on sleep, recovery, and strain. 
but the metrics are a little bit different than what you're probably used to if you're using a Garmin, an Apple Watch, or even a Fitbit. For example, on the Whoop platform, there's no step tracking, so it's not going to count your steps throughout the day. There's no stairs climb metrics or any of that walking or movement data that you're used to on a Fitbit or a Garmin. Instead, you get something like your strain score, which breaks down how strained your body is on a given day from all the activity you did. You also get a ton of sleep and recovery data and a sleep performance score to let you know how effective your sleep was from the previous night. Something I really like about the Whoop Band is some of the more unique metrics like the sleep debt that lets you know how behind you are in your sleep. So it'll actually tell you how much sleep you needed versus how much sleep you got and whether or not you were over or under on that metric. At the end of the day, this is a wellness device and less of a fitness tracking device. So you're not gonna see things like your estimated VO2 max, for example. The sixth and final question you should ask yourself about the Whoop Band and the Whoop Band 4.0 specifically is going to be, do you need good heart rate sensor accuracy? I've personally done a whole bunch of heart rate sensor accuracy testing on the Whoop Band and the Whoop Band 4.0 specifically, as compared to a bunch of other test devices like Garmin's and of course ECG sensors, which are really accurate in a good baseline of comparison. And what I've found over the past couple of years of using this thing is that the Whoop Band is not awesome when it comes to accuracy, which is kind of weird, but I also don't think it matters as much as you think. You see, the magic of the Whoop Band is really the app on your phone and all the algorithms and data they're doing in the background to come up with actionable data about your sleep, your recovery, and your strain. And in those Whoop algorithms, when they're doing all that data crunching, I'm pretty sure they're averaging things out. They're smoothing a lot of those hills and data spikes. And that's how they're coming up with a lot of the data that you see on the app on your phone. In my experience with the Whoop platform, on days I'm not feeling so hot, it will show that my HRV tanked or that I didn't get a good night of sleep the day before. And on days I'm feeling tired, it'll show that my sleep was bad, my sleep score is really low. In days I'm feeling really strained, my strain score will be through the roof. And all that data seems very useful, even though the sensor accuracy isn't perfect. However, there is one situation where the heart rate sensor accuracy really does matter. And that's when you're broadcasting your heart rate data to another device. You can actually enable in the settings within the app in the Whoop app on your phone to broadcast the heart rate data that's being collected from the sensor on the back of the band. And when you do that, you can broadcast it to a treadmill, a bike computer, even another watch, or even to your phone. And when you do that, you're not going to get perfect heart rate accuracy. And if you're doing something on the treadmill, like you know intervals where you're trying to hit a certain beats per minute, you're not going to see perfect data there. And that's where the accuracy does become an issue. But for everyday wear and using the Whoop app on your phone, I don't think the accuracy is a huge deal, but it can be in some situations. Now that we've gone through those six questions, let's talk about final thoughts and conclusions and what I think about the Whoop Band after wearing it for a couple of years. The Whoop Band is really interesting because it's become super popular thanks to Whoop's aggressive marketing tactics. They've got targeted ads on Instagram and Facebook and they sponsor huge podcasts and YouTube channels. They're kind of all over the place. Even though they market hard, I will say that it's not a bad product. In fact, I really like using this thing and I've been wearing it daily lately because I really like the data that I'm getting from the Whoop app on my phone. However, I do also wear a Garmin smartwatch every day and I do find that Garmin's tools like body battery, sleep and stress tracking do align pretty favorably to the data I'm getting from the Whoop platform, which is a good thing. But you gotta keep in mind that the Garmin Connect platform is free. There's no subscription other than investing in the device up front. On the other hand, the Woo platform is a little bit different and there's something about it that I really like, the way everything's laid out in, like I said before, that sleep debt and the sleep tracking and the recovery day to day is really cool and it's all laid out in a very smart way, which I do appreciate and that's why I've been wearing it a lot lately. I think ultimately for a lot of people, it's all going to boil down to that subscription. This thing's not cheap and if you pay 30 bucks a month without prepaying for a discount, that adds up quick. We're talking about $360 a year for this thing, which is a lot of money. That would allow you to buy a brand new Apple Watch or Garmin every year indefinitely. So it's really hard to ignore. But as with anything, there are pros and cons to the Whoop Band. And all I can do here is share my personal experience and lay it all out there. And hopefully these six questions that I laid out in this video help you form your own opinion on whether or not you should invest your hard earned money in the Whoop platform. And now's the point of the video where I want to hear from you. Do you have a Whoop Band? Do you like it? Did you switch from Garmin to Whoop? Did you go from Whoop to Garmin? Do you have an Apple Watch? Let me know in the comments down below. I would love to hear from you. Also, let me know 
Do you like the subscription model or do you hate it? Because that seems pretty polarizing as well. I really hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, please consider giving me a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel down below because that really helps me out. And if you're planning on picking up a Whoop Band or a Garmin or anything else I talked about in this video, I'll have it all linked in the description down below. And those links do help support this channel and they cost nothing extra to you. In fact, the Whoop link will give you a discount. So check that out. That's all I've got for this one. I was hoping this would be quicker, but it took a lot longer. That's seems to happen. Okay, I'll see you next time. Bye.